Back in the Bernie, you said, Joe. Those were the cheers, or if you will, the boos, that the president received at Madison Square Garden on Saturday night as he attended UFC 40, 244 for the uh, baddest MF belt. And uh, on the line with us right now is uh, one of our favorite Congress people, a great statesman. He represents the, well, what is it, the 13th district out there in Long Island? Good morning to you, Peter King. The second district, excuse me. Hello, Peter. Bernie, Bernie, I'm there. Bernie, how you doing? Bernie, shit, how you guys? Good, how you hey, doing? Hey, Peter, how are you, pal? Doing fine. Hey, listen, uh, were, those, uh, were those cheers for you when you came in with the president on uh, Saturday night? <laughs> I'd say he got a tremendous ovation. And when I saw the headlines about the president being booed, I would say, honestly, at least 80%. Of that wow. uh, noise was cheering and carrying on. I mean, people were, and we started uh, you know, waving to the crowd. It was like one of his rallies. Uh, no, I mean, it was, uh, uh, if you introduce any politician in a crowd like that, you're going to get a lot of booing. In his case, it was almost none. It was a really solid, solid response. All right. And uh, he loved it. And I can tell you beforehand, I was backstage with him, and he said, you know, these New Yorkers, I mean, what the hell are they going to do, you know, when they, uh, <laughs> when they see you? But when he got out there, he was the happiest guy in the world. And about five minutes afterwards, after the other cheering stop, he leaned over and he said, you know, these are my people. This, this was great. So he was in great spirits. I love it. Listen, uh, uh, one of the fighters, Derek the Black Beast, while he was fighting, he was fighting this uh, dude from Bulgaria, this big, bad-looking uh, dude. Uh, uh, Ivanov was his last name. And during the fight, it was exciting. They were actually cheering USA, 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 which sort of sounded a little bit like a Trump rally for uh, well, while they were doing it, at least. There was a lot of that there. It was uh, a lot of that. Also, people coming over doing selfies. I mean, listen, I, when he invited me, I thought we'd be sitting in the, a luxury box somewhere, you know, <laughs> you know, being wined and dined. I didn't think we'd be right down. It was uh, second row ringside. <laughs> yes. It was right there. I mean, all the yelling and screaming and people coming by. And uh, it was a, a real raucous fight crowd especially UFC crowd, and he was right in the middle of it. It was great. Uh, he and his two sons were there, Eric and Don Jr. Roberto Duran was sitting right in the, uh, the, uh, the row in front of us. He was there, and he turned around once, maybe he was sparring with the president. The president seemed like he had a pretty good right hand, but you know, they didn't go, they didn't go <laughs> any further than that. And uh, probably the only people who were anxious were all the Secret Service agents and uh, cops in the audience, because they had to make sure that you know, the president was safe. But it was great. It was just a great night, and... Uh, you know, the main event, it was, uh, God, it was incredible. It was, uh, I, again, I'm, I'm more of a boxing fan. I'm not that big into UFC, but I'll tell you, it was exciting. This guy, uh, Masvidal, who was the underdog, I think, and he just beat this guy, Diaz. I never seen so much blood. I mean, his eyes, he is everything. It was just, uh, yeah, the baddest, of blood. the ba- BMF title is, uh, to, to be polite, uh, yeah. it was, and, and they are two of the BMFs in that, uh, sport, and that's a badass sport. In fact, The Rock was there. They you know, present the belt at the end. He was he was sitting like about uh, five seats over to the uh, the right of us in the first row. He was uh, no, it was just great. And uh, I, I just wish people were more honest. Listen, I can understand why people you know don't agree with President Trump, why they don't like him. But the fact is that trying to create this impression that the whole world is against him or he has no support, I can't imagine any other politician getting support that he got there on Saturday night. It's funny because uh, Mike Gunzelman, who you know very, very well, Peter, the executive producer of my sports show on Sunday morning, I didn't watch the fights, and I just read that he was booed vehemently. I didn't read the New York Post. Gunzelman calls me yesterday morning to pre- pre- uh, prepare for my Sunday show. He was there, and he's like, the president got killed last night. So that's what I thought. That's what he told me. He was there on uh, Sunday morning. That is not true. In fact, if you read some of the accounts later on, they said there was some booing at the start, but the cheers overwhelmed it. And I was actually talking to a fairly respected reporter yesterday, and I brought that up, but that reporter yeah. responded to me, yeah, uh, that they were, they were already relying on the Washington Post story. Uh, <laughs> from the Washington yeah. story, you know, you know, for the week before. Right. I'll tell you, I, I've been at a lot of events where uh, politicians are introduced or actors or actresses are introduced. This was as good a response, if not better, than any, uh, any I've ever seen. So was he going to uh, change his permanent residency back to New York this week after announcing he was going to Florida last week? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think he's gone. I think he's away from Andrew Cuomo and Bill de Blasio. That's, uh, that's as much about it as anything. But uh, yeah, then I was with him again at about, uh, at, you know, the main event starts at midnight. Uh, and uh, somewhere during the uh, final fight, he says, hey, you want to go uh, back to D.C. with me tomorrow? So I said, sure, what time are you leaving? He goes, I don't know, about 2 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out we had to be at a Trump Tower 
uh, before 8 o'clock. I had to get home until after 2, so I was operating on like three hours sleep. Oh. But it was great to see him. He was there yesterday morning, Trump Tower. He comes down, and there were uh, about eight cops and firefighters who had been picked to get their pictures taken with the president. He came down, Secret Service, everyone said, hey, you know, we've got to get out of here. There's a time schedule and everything. He stopped. He did a photo with every one of them and spoke to them. It was no, no kind of a rush. That's really, a- again, we all class. A man of the people. And, and from what I understand, Congressman King, there was uh, an underground tunnel that you drove in and out of so you didn't have the, uh, the the low lives on the streets to deal with, even though outside the pro-Trump protesters outnumbered the anti-Trump protesters earlier on in the evening at the very least. But my question to you is this, Congressman. I yeah. mean, you guys were there for I watched the whole thing and uh, you watch it, obviously, from the uh, stands. What happened when you had to use the men's room? Did, was that like a big commotion, or did, I mean, was that a problem for you? No, not really, because uh, when the president arrived, see, I didn't arrive with him. I got there on my own. He came in from Washington. So we met him at the elevator. When the, he could from the underground tunnel into the uh, elevator, and then we went to a, a room backstage for about an hour. Wow. He was going over all the logistics and talking to people. So we took care of things there. That was fine. Nice. You know, you can't uh, really blame the president for changing his residency, despite the warm reception he received downstairs Saturday night at Madison Square Garden. When you see the big story in this city, you did mention Bill de Blasio, Peter, and the big story is, of course, uh, January of 2020, that bail reform law is going to start. But before that, uh, he and the governor, they plan on releasing about 800 inmates. And some of these guys have committed some pretty serious crimes. And and to get them to get to court, just to get to court, they're going to give these guys gift cards and Met baseball tickets. I've never heard anything like this. They're going to let these guys out, despite the fact they've committed some heinous crimes, and give them gifts on top of it. How can you blame President Trump for getting the hell out of here? No, and it's going to even be worse. You know, once they start doing away with bail, and you're going to have guys who are out in the street, uh, they're going to be put, you know, right back out in the street. And they, uh, I think, within 15 days, have to be given the names of the witnesses that are coming up against them. So uh, you're a witness against a guy who maybe was a burglar or whatever, and he knows who you are, and he's got you know, time to come and get you. Now this whole thing is crazy. I mean, you look at what happened over the weekend. I mean, throwing all the garbage and crap on the uh, police car in Brooklyn. On uh, Friday night, and then the uh, you know, the attacks on the turnstiles on on Saturday. I mean, again, all these uh, uh, with these so-called lesser offenses right now being you know not prosecuted, not being arrested for things are getting out of control. When you have all these other people back on the street, uh, it's going to really be chaotic. I think it's it's dangerous. It's uh, uh, something I guess with some you know, good intention somewhere, but it's going to be I it's going to be tough being a cop in the city. I tell you, it's tough enough now. And it's, uh, it was tough over the weekend, and after January 1st, it's really going to be tough. And it almost pays to be a bad guy, you know. It's absolutely stunning what's going to happen. And, and never forget, anybody forget, that Governor Cuomo signed this all into law. Governor Cuomo signed it into law, signed off on it. And I'm going to segue, if you don't mind, uh, Congressman King, to impeachment. And I'm right. convinced, of course, that uh, this impeachment, uh, this uh, political lynching, yes, I'll call it that, is not, near, is not about removing the president because... Obviously, it's not going to. He's not going to be convicted in the Senate. It's about winning the 2020 election because they're desperate. My question to you is this: During the impeachment hearings, however, will the uh, will, does the minority, you guys, have the right to call witnesses? Uh, I, I know you do, and then it's subject to the approval of the committee chairman, which will. It's not a fair process. But was that the same process used during the Clinton impeachment hearings, which, by the way, you voted against? Right. Uh, my understanding is that I never heard anyone complaining about the process during the uh, Clinton impeachment. Uh, the Republicans could bring in witnesses. I remember they brought in a congressman who had been on the uh, uh, panel with, uh, you know, during the, uh, the Nixon impeachment. They had others there, different experts coming in. Uh, that, in fact, any number of witnesses, uh, uh, law professors coming in. Uh, uh, both sides could call, you know, Democrats could call really anyone they wanted, uh, as I understand it. I never heard of any witness being rejected. It was a whole different tone to it. Uh, it was never this whole star chamber uh, attitude that you have now. I mean, I, I lived through all that, and with all of the yelling and all of it on, all of the tension, I never heard anyone on the Democratic side complain about uh, not, not being treated fairly during, you know, during the process. Hey, let's uh, move over to Baghdadi's killing last week. You've been working with Homeland Security forever. Uh, very, very important 
part of the government. And uh, this was an amazing job by President Trump, his administration, obviously his intelligence people. Were you surprised? And, and I don't know why you would be. I'm, I'm, I wasn't. But were you surprised to see some of the backlash, some of the folks refusing to give this president credit for what uh, his administration accomplished last week? Yeah, I was really disappointed. I guess I wasn't surprised. I was disappointed. I figured there would at least be a few days of credit for the president, for the country, for the special forces that did it. As it turned out, yeah, the dog got more credit than the president did. I mean, it's <laughs> true. Uh, it's true. It was just uh, oh, it's no, sick. It's sick. Strong. I, was, I, I remember when Bin Laden was killed. I, I, I must have done like seven or eight TV shows that, that, that morning. And the first thing I said was to give President Obama credit. Because let's face it, if that raid had not worked, if any of those uh, uh, special forces had been killed, if the helicopters had crashed, they would have been blaming President Trump all over the place, saying he was doing it for political reasons, saying the blood is on his hands. So if it goes right, you should get the credit. And not that you're looking necessarily for credit, but to me, that, that, that brings the country together. It shows that when we want to, we can get something done, and uh, it, it unifies the country. And uh, to me, it was shameful the way they reacted to that, almost as if it was an afterthought. Oh, yeah, they killed this guy. Now, he was the most vicious, brutal, most wanted man in the world. He was the one who was burning people alive, beheading people. I mean, he was just incredibly hard and vicious. And then a few days later, we knock off the second guy. I mean, this, this shows how these, you know, the military has been unleashed under, uh, under President Trump, which is why ISIS, that whole caliphate in the Middle East has been crushed. Even, and uh, again, he gets no credit for that. Which is uh, really sick. And even worse than being a rapist and a war criminal, he was a homophobe. But they forget, they ignore all that. He was a, a, an austere religious figure. Congressman King, we're out of time. But listen, glad you had a great weekend. And we're so thankful you came on this morning and straightened this whole uh, nonsense out about the cheering. And uh, listen, good luck to you. Godspeed down in Washington. And come back soon, please. And the only better fight would have been Bernie and Shetty. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Peter. Good to talk to you, pal. Okay, Bernie. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, thank you.